The year 2030 will be an important milestone for the food sector and the ambitious goals for global food supply and food waste management. The targets that have to be reached are defined in the Sustainable Development Goals, the so-called SDGs, in the United Nations Development Agenda for the 21st century. In order to achieve the second SDG by 2030, which means end hunger, achieve food security and improved nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture will require a profound change of global food and agriculture systems. However, at the same time, a lot of food is wasted along supply chains. The immense increase of efficiency and productivity in the agricultural and food sector during the past few decades has resulted in a very complex and non-transparent global food supply chain. This development also impacts the attitude and behavior at consumer level. Particularly in the developed industrialized countries, food has become more and more an opulence good in our consumer society and is not treated with the respect it deserves. A lot of edible food ends up in the waste bin every day. Figures presented by the United Nations indicate that about 1.3 billion tons of food are wasted on our planet every year while almost 1 billion people go undernourished or hungry. For example, with the amount of money that is lost due to wasted food in Austrian households, this is about 270 to 300 euros per household in year, more than 6.5 million children in sub-Saharan Africa could be nourished by the help of worldwide aid agencies. Therefore, some targets set in the SDGs as well as in the European Action Plan for the Circular Economy focus on the food waste sector and set the aim to halve per capita food waste at the retail and consumer levels by 2030 and to reduce food losses along production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. Moreover, the production of food requires the use of resources such as fuels, land, water and raw materials, which have associated economic, environmental as well as social and ethical impacts. Environmental impacts are for example methane emissions from cattle farming on nitrous oxide emissions from the applications of fertilizers. Both contribute to climate change together with emissions related to energy for transport, storage, cooling, processing and cooking of food. An indicative estimation for Europe of potential climate change impacts associated with food waste along the full supply chain yields a figure of about 186 million tons CO2 equivalents. And of course, each food product has a different impact due to its specific history. The management of food waste as a kind of bio-waste is also an important issue within the forward-looking concept of bioeconomy. The idea of bioeconomy can be regarded as an integral part of a future circular economy. Bioeconomy is defined as the production of renewable biological resources and the conversion of these resources as well as biogenic waste streams into value-added products such as food, feed, bio-based materials and bioenergy. Both concepts, circular economy and bioeconomy, share a number of overarching objectives, such as resource efficiency, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and they both encourage the principle of cascading use of biomass and the valorization of biological wastes and residues. The Institute of Waste Management at BOKO, the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Vienna, is conducting scientific research into issues which are highly relevant for bioeconomy and circular economy approaches. Since more than 15 years now, food waste is, among others, a main research topic at our institute, and we were and are a leading partner in many national and EU-wide food waste projects. For example, the finished EU project Fusions or the still ongoing project Strefova, which is focusing on strategies to reduce food waste in Central Europe. The current project Refresh within Horizon 2020 is, for example, closely collaborating with the EU platform on food losses and food waste, which has been established as part of the Circular Economy Action Plan. 
according to the project Fusions, which provides first specific estimates on food waste in the EU28 member countries, the amount of food wasted along the full supply chain equals about 20% of the total food produced in Europe. More than half of that is generated by households, and the food waste from households, together with waste from food services and the retail sector, makes up about 70% of total food waste. The production and processing sectors are contributing the remaining 30%. In absolute numbers, about 88 million tons of food waste is produced annually in the European Union. This amounts to about 173 kilograms of food waste per person and year in the EU28 member countries. Of course, big differences occur on a national and regional level. And there is still uncertainty concerning this estimate since many data gaps exist and consistent quantification methodologies are still missing. According to these numbers, in the EU countries, food waste occurs mainly in households, estimated to be about 47 million tons per year, or about 92 kilograms per person a year. Consequently, that means everybody of us is required to optimize the daily handling of food in order to minimize the avoidable food waste and everyone can greatly contribute to the avoidance and reduction of food waste. Reasons why people discard food are manifold. Often the socio-economic level, the age and attitude of people have a big impact on food waste generation. Data from recent surveys shows that younger people, meaning the group of 16 to 29 years old persons, have a more careless and unmindful handling of food compared to older persons. Another issue impacting food waste generation is the packaging of food. Correct and smart packaging of food along the processing and retail chain, particularly for products with a resource-intensive history, like meat, can clearly help reducing food waste. However, more information is needed at and about the consumer level, like how do people handle diverse kinds of packaging at home, or do smart packaging materials still have a positive impact on the storage stability after opening them? Such questions, among others, are addressed in an ongoing research project in which our institute is involved. The issue concerning packaging material is strongly linked to another important vision communicated by the EU, which means that by 2030 all plastic packaging placed on the EU market should be either reusable or can be recycled in a cost-effective manner. This vision become a real challenge because more and more smart packaging materials like composite materials consisting of many diverse layers and components, often in a nanoscale dimension, enter the market. And currently, these composite packaging materials are hardly recyclable. For example, the European Institute for Health and Consumer Protection reveals that the use of nanomaterials in the food packaging market is expected to reach 20 billion US dollars by the year 2020, which means a triplication compared to the 6.5 billion dollars in 2013. The diverse impacting factors on food waste generation are important to keep in mind when we come to talk about potential prevention measures of food waste. Waste prevention is the first priority within waste management, according to the EU waste management hierarchy. This particularly applies for food waste and food losses as well. However, the determination which food waste is actually avoidable and how it can be prevented is not obvious in many cases. The determination of avoidable and unavoidable parts of food waste is important in order to assess the actual prevention potential of food waste, particularly for decision making. A detailed Austrian study on household waste carried out by our institute shows that up to 60% of the food waste found in residual waste bins is avoidable. However, further disposal options need to be taken into consideration as well in order to get a holistic picture of avoidable food waste. For example, some food waste is separately collected in bio-waste bins or disposed of somewhere else, like in the sewer or in home composting. Currently, diverse barriers to food waste prevention exist, 
which for example are related to technology, business management and economy, legislation, as well as to consumer behavior and lifestyles. It is not possible to pick out just one or few main determinants that are clearly responsible for food waste. It is rather a combination of many interconnected causes. Moreover, we must keep in mind that food waste exhibits different characteristics from other waste types, making conventional and established recycling processes unfeasible. Due to its specific characteristics, the logistics associated with food waste is different and more challenging compared to other waste types, since the time factor is in many cases a determining issue. Unlike other waste fractions, food waste can only rarely be stockpiled until proper reuse or recycling options are found. Nevertheless, to achieve a secure food supply chain with minimal losses and food wastage, promising ideas and potential options have already been identified, both on the EU level in diverse research projects, platforms and stakeholder consultation processes, as well as on a national basis, as we have, for example, in our Austrian Waste Management Plan. These forward-looking options and ideas now need to be implemented and transformed into clear and viable goals and tasks along the entire supply chain. The Circular Economy Action Plan provides a promising political framework to activate and support such implementation processes. However, for a real transformation, we need groundbreaking changes. We all have to think outside the box of established dogmas and societal behaviors at all levels of the supply chain and at all stages of the life cycle. As the consumer is a key part for changes in the economy, and as we know from current data that a lot of food waste is generated at the consumer level, our consumption patterns and lifestyles must be resought and reformed. Circular economy approaches therefore cannot be limited to the implementation of innovative and improved technologies, not limited to the technical optimization of resource efficiency or introduction of new business models. Sustainable circular economy approaches must change people's attitude, our consumer behavior, our lifestyle as well. The world's population is expected to strongly increase within the next decades. Therefore, the lifestyle of this growing population, meaning how people live, how they consume and how they behave, is an essential factor and is most probably a factor that has even a higher overall impact than each newly developed and improved technology or business management concept.